With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Well, say, I meant to ask you, uh, how was Mrs. Richardson's party the other day? Oh, it was very nice. She's the most perfect housekeeper I've ever seen. Her house is absolutely immaculate. Yeah, that's what I understand. Her table looked just beautiful. Of course, there was a good reason for that. Well, why not? America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, presents The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Something strange going on in the living room of the Nelsons at 1847 Rogers Road. There's David, age 12, and Ricky, age 8, on their hands and knees, creeping toward the Davenport. Their faces look so serious. Must be somebody hiding back there. I wonder who it is. Maybe it's Nick, the family dog, or, or maybe it's little Will Thornberry from next door. Hey, those feet look awful big for... Why, it's Ozzy! Now, what's a full-grown man doing hiding behind the Davenport? We got you! Okay, fellas, okay, you caught me. I surrender. Gee, Bob, you aren't playing right. We're supposed to be the cowboys and you're a bad Indian. Well, I'm doing the best I can. You're supposed to show a little fight. Well, I've been saying bang, bang, but you guys won't fall down. You've been missing us. According to the laws of Fort Nelson, you're entitled to a trial. I vote we shoot him. I vote we shoot him, too. That was hardly worth getting the judge out of bed for. <laughs> Indian, have you any last words? Yeah, me quit. <laughs> you can't quit, huh? David, this is the third time you've captured me, and it's the third time I've been sentenced to be shot, and I quit. Don't quit now, Pop. Let us capture you once more, like the first time when we tied you up. Well, okay, just once more, though. We Indians have other things to do. This afternoon, I have to pose for a new nickel. You get the last two, Ricky. I'll hide here behind this cactus bush. Which cactus bush? This one here, with the yellow lampshade on it. Oh. You know, this time I think I'll surprise you guys and show a little fight. I think it's about time the Indian tied up two rather short cowboys. That's what I've been saying, Pop. You've been making it too easy. You get him from that side, Ricky. I'll get him from this side. Grab his feet, David. Throw the lasso. Yeah. No, you, no, you don't. Get the rope. <laughs> ah, a little different this time, isn't it? How do you like this? <laughs> you sure are strong, Pop. You can really fight when you want to. Uh, thanks, boys. Now untie me and let me up. <laughs> That's it. Now you can get up, Pop. Yeah. Watch your foot. Oh, holy smokes. You really busted it, Pop. What was that? Uh, nothing, Harriet. Nothing serious. I'll see you later, Pop. Come on, Ricky. Ricky? He's already gone. <laughs> oh, Ozzie, for goodness 
sakes, my antique vase. Well, I couldn't help it. I bumped into it accidentally. Besides, antiques are supposed to look old. Certainly looks much older now. <laughs> the whole living room looks older. What happened to the scatter rugs? Oh, they're scattered around. The place looks like a cyclone hit it. Oh, Harriet, don't be so fussy. I don't mind telling you I'm getting pretty tired of straightening things up around here. The more work I do, the messier the place looks. Well, suppose it does look a little disorderly now and then. After all, it's a home. People live here. That's no reason for it to be messed up all the time. It isn't. Do you know anybody's home that looks nicer than ours? Yes, I do. Mrs. Richardson's, for one. Her place looks absolutely immaculate all the time. Well, she doesn't have any children to mess the place up. Don't forget, we have two. We have three. Here, pick up your Indian hat, Tonto. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Nelson. Oh, Mr. Richardson, come in. Thank you. I hope you'll excuse the appearance of this living room. The boys have just finished a game of Cowboys and Indians. Oh, forget it. As a matter of fact, it... What? Oh, Mr. Richardson. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, I don't know who could have put that footstool there. Let me help you up. I hope you didn't hurt yourself. Oh, not, not at all, not at all. Please think nothing of it, Mrs. Nelson. <sighs> It's been a long time since I've tripped over a footstool. <laughs> I have a chair, won't you? Yeah, thank you, but I really can't stay. I just stopped by with this issue of good housekeeping. Mrs. Richardson said there was an article in it you wanted to read. Oh, thanks very much, but I could have picked it up. Well, it was right on the way. I have to go to the store and get Mrs. Richardson some scouring powder. Well, I have a can of it she can have. We buy it by the case. <laughs> is such a wonderful housekeeper. I do envy her so. Your house always looks so immaculate. Yes, it does, doesn't it? What a pleasure it must be to live in a house like that. Yes, Mrs. Richardson enjoys it very much. <laughs> she used to be a bacteriologist, you know. Oh, please sit down. You can stay for a few minutes, can't you? All right, I will. Oh, oh my goodness. I guess one of the boys left his pencil box on the chair. I'm so sorry, Mr. Richard. No, no, no. It's quite all right. It's <sighs> been a long time since I've sat on a pencil box. I wish I'd known you were stopping by. I could have at least given the house a quick going over. Oh, really, Mrs. Nelson? It looks wonderful. Very comfortable. It reminds me of our house back home when I was a boy. Well, we have two youngsters, and you know how boys are about keeping things orderly. May I ask you a very direct question, Mrs. Nelson? Of course. Well, um, you've seen my wife at various social affairs. You've played bridge with her, seen her at club meetings. Yes. How does she look without a dust cap? <laughs> Mr. Richardson, uh, she doesn't spend that much time cleaning the house, does she? Mrs. Nelson, I love my wife. She's a wonderful woman. We've been married now for ten years. Ten spotless antiseptic <laughs> years. <laughs> but living in our house is like living in the operating room of a hospital. Would you mind awfully if I smoke my pipe? Oh, of course not. Go right ahead. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're very kind. It's been a long time since I've smoked in the house. <laughs> what a wonderful day. Tripped over a footstool, sat on a pencil box. Now I'm smoking my pipe. <laughs> Why don't you put your feet up on the hassock? Make a day of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Am I keeping you from anything, Mrs. Nelson? Oh, nothing important. I just have to wash the dishes a little later. The sink's full of them. Dirty dishes. <laughs> Could I see them? <laughs> oh, now you're kidding, Mr. Richardson. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps a little. But I do mean this, every word of it. Don't ever change anything about this house, Mrs. Nelson. It's perfect. As I walked in the door, something seemed to say... This is a real home. People live here. 
happy, comfortable people. Hello, Oz. Oh, uh, hi, Thorny. Oz, you're just the man I've been waiting for. I have a present for you. Present for me? Yes, sir. I've been cleaning up the yard, and I came across an old boiler, and it's yours. Oh, well, thank you, Thorny, but I really have no use for an old boiler. Neither have I. Oh, you like it, Ozzy. It's rusty. Makes the water nice and red. Gives you a ruddy complexion. <laughs> I hate to seem unappreciative, Thorny, but I really don't want it. Well, it's a present. You can't give it back. I haven't accepted it. You have so. I carried it over and leaned it against your garage. <laughs> you haven't said thank you, Oz, but I know it's in your heart. And you're welcome. <laughs> I bet I can guess what happened at your house. Catherine pushed you outside to clean up the yard. What a ridiculous idea. Oh, the same thing at our house. Harriet's on a clean-up campaign, too. She just practically drove me out of the house, gave me a big lecture about keeping things neat and tight. Well, as a matter of fact, I think she's right. Uh, you're kidding. No, I'm not, Oz. I really mean it. Just think of all the things a woman has to do around the house. She does the cleaning, the cooking, the shopping, taking care of the kids and the sewing, the mending, the, the laundry. The least we men can do is cooperate, try to make her job a little easier. Yeah, maybe you're right, Thorny. Well, of course I am. Matter of fact, until you started talking about it, I never realized what a wonderful job Catherine does around our house. Work, 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 all day long, seven days a week. Standing over a hot stove all day, cooking meals, mending clothes, getting me off to work on time, keeping the place tidy. You know something, Oz? I'm going in the house and tell Catherine to stop this grind and get out for a little fun. I'll see you later. Oh. What's the matter, Thorny? I just remembered Catherine's not home. She's out playing bridge someplace. Hi, Pa. Hi, Pa. Uh, hello, boys. Uh, Ricky, are those your books on the hall stairs? Yes, they are. Well, take them upstairs, will you, please? Huh? As a matter of fact, fellows, from now on, we're going to be a little more careful about keeping things neat around here. Are we going to have company? No, no, it has nothing to do with company. It says that we've got to start showing a little consideration for your mother. I just went upstairs, and there was a towel lying right in the middle of the bathroom floor. Somebody just thrown it down. Wasn't me, Pop. Wasn't me. I haven't washed my hands for a couple of days. <laughs> I'm going to start making some new rules around here. No more lounging on the sofa with our feet propped up on a chair. No more throwing banana peels in the fireplace. No more rope twirling in here. And no more pillow fights in the bedroom. Is this how it is when you're in jail, Pop? No, Ricky, this is how it is when you're part of a well-organized family. We're going to help your mother keep our house well-organized. No more wrestling in the living room. No more tossing the football in the house. No more sliding down the banister and no more shooting firecrackers in the cellar. Holy smoke! Look at this living room. You guys have been home about an hour and it looks like a mess. Let's start in right now by straightening up this room. Make it just as neat and clean as Mrs. Richardson's. Come on, we'll make a game of it. Okay, come on, David. I'll be hobble on Cassidy and Pop's a cattle thief. No, 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 not this time. I have a better game in mind. Let's make believe we're the Nelson Cleanup Commandos. I'll be the captain, and you guys will be my troops. You don't have to do that, Pa. Well, I just thought the idea of the game would make it easier for you guys to live up to. Be a lot of fun, you and Ricky being the troops. The... You don't have to make it a game, Pop. Oh, okay, if you don't want to make it a game. But oh, let's get started anyway. Ready? Sure. Okay, Pa. Attention! Pop, we said you don't David, have to... did I give you an argument when you wanted to be cowboys? Now, let's go. Attention! Guys, I sure hate to see the Nelson house get like the one poor Mr. Richardson lives in. But if that's the way Harriet wants it, that's the way it'll have to be. It's the woman who makes the rules, you know. Yeah, been that way for years. And it's still the thing to do. Just the way it's still the thing for a guy and his girl to go for a stroll on Sunday afternoon. And it's still the thing, when that young couple are married, to own 1847 Rogers Brothers, the finest silver plate in America. Yes, now, as over a century ago, 
1847 Rogers Brothers is the right choice for silver plate whose beauty and workmanship is unexcelled. Now, as then, that famous year mark, 1847, stands for the very best. Nowhere else will you find the same lovely features, the superior imagination of the pattern designs, the exquisite detail, the extra luster and weight of each piece. Only 1847 is so much like solid silver. So, see it tomorrow, won't you? For remember, it's still the thing, as it was over a century ago, to choose 1847 Rogers Brothers the finest silver plate in America. Man's work is from sun to sun, but a woman's work is never done. Yes, it's an old familiar saying, but it's based on years and years of experience. Through the ages, historians have recorded proof that man never changes. Back in the old Roman Empire, there was Antony and Cleopatra. Antony? A hair in the milk bath, Cleo. Antony, I'm getting tired of this. You always leave your things lying around. The trophy room's a mess. But, baby. From now on, I want the place kept in order. But, baby. I mean it. Starting today, when you've finished your milk bath, don't leave the empty bottles in the tub. <laughs> Even before Antony and Cleopatra, back in the days of the caveman, woman was faced with the same problem. Neanderthal? Neanderthal? Here in the dinosaur room, Una. <laughs> Neanderthal, I'm disgusted. Look at this place. It looks like an absolute mess. But, baby... You ought to be ashamed. Look at yourself, a full-grown man, four foot three. I spend all day cleaning and now look at it But baby, what's wrong with it? This cave looks like a hole in the wall Even royal families have encountered this domestic conflict In one particular case, I think the husband deserved the sympathy The case of King Solomon So we're getting tired of this We try and keep the palace clean and you keep messing it up Why can't you help us keep it tidy? Huh? <laughs> but babies. Today, at 1847 Rogers Road, three sturdy souls have set forth to rectify this injustice. Now, with contented smiles and aching backs, they carefully seat themselves in the living room, which they've put in order. Not a spot, not a smudge, not a thing out of place. Yes, it's a pretty self-satisfied Ozzie, David, and Ricky that greet Harriet as she enters. Oh, well, hello. So quiet, I didn't think anybody was in the house. A home should be quiet, Harriet. I'm wearing my wool pants because my corduroys make too much noise when I walk around. <laughs> what happened to the living room? It's so clean. The way a home should be. Why don't you put your feet up on the footstool, dear? No, no, Harriet. I'll just keep them flat on the floor. They look so much neater that way. <laughs> David, why don't you and Ricky play a game of cards or something instead of just sitting there like a couple of wooden Indians? We didn't want to get out the card table, Mom. It might mess up the living room. Oh, David, go ahead and get out the card table. Be honest, Mom? <laughs> uh, no, thanks. I guess we'll just sit here like a couple of wooden Indians. I can't get over this house looking so neat and clean. Well, we've done a pretty good job, don't you think? I ran the vacuum. I dusted. And I washed the windows. Look at that one. Not a speck on it. So clean it doesn't even look like it's there. It isn't, Pop. I left it open. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better close it, David. We don't want a lot of dust blowing around in here. Where's Nick? Uh, outside in the yard where a dog is supposed to be, Harriet. We don't want him getting hair all over the rug and the furniture. A little hair on the rug doesn't hurt anything. I haven't been that fussy. The dog stays outside. He sheds a hair here. He sheds a hair there. He sheds a hair somewhere else. Pretty soon, what have you got? A bald dog. <laughs> yes, and a rug that has to go to the veterinarians to be clipped. The dog stays outside. May we be excused? We have some homework to do. All right, boys, but walk very carefully. I'll get it. Uh, would you please, Harry? Uh, I'm going out to the garage and smoke my pipe a while. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Harriet. It's Mother. Hello, Mother. Something the matter, dear? You sound a little strange. 
I don't wonder. There are strange things going on around here. Really? Something I should know about? Oh, no, Mother, nothing important. In fact, it's a pleasure for a change. Well, I hate to say this, Harriet, but you aren't making very much sense. Well, I'm not trying to be mysterious. It's just that the whole thing is a little difficult to explain. Ozzie and I have been playing sort of a little game. Oh, that's nice. Especially so near Valentine's Day. <laughs> Shall I call back later, dear? Oh, no. No, he's out in the garage now. <laughs> Hiding? No, Mother. No, we're not playing actual games. It's just that Ozzy's trying to teach me a lesson, and I won't give him a tumble. Oh, well, be careful, dear. Mary Henderson threw out her sacroiliac, and she was only playing charades. <laughs> uh, this is a different kind of a game. I gave Ozzy a little lecture about messing up the house, so now he and the boys have started a cleanup campaign. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, yes, but they're carrying it to ridiculous extremes. I think the idea is for me to beg them to get back to normal. Well, then why don't you do it, dear? Make them happy. No, I think I'll use a different approach. You know the old saying, there's more than one way to rope a steer. Well, you do what you like, dear. You know I don't like to interfere. I'll... I'll forget the whole thing. I won't even call to see how things work out. All right, Mother. But you'll be sure and call me. <laughs> okay, Mother. Goodbye. Oh, hi, Emmy Lou. What are you doing out here in the garage? Uh, Mrs. Nelson's trying to keep the house clean, and, and I get ashes on the carpet. Daddy says it keeps the moths away. Well, maybe so, but the smoke curls up through the curtains, and I, I kind of like to lean back on the couch, and that crumples up the pillows. <laughs> but my goodness, Mr. Nelson, the man has a right to be comfortable in his own home. Well, after all, this garage is part of our home, and uh, you'd be surprised. It's, it's not too uncomfortable lying here on the concrete. <laughs> What does Mrs. Nelson think of all this? Oh, as a matter of fact, she started the whole idea. Frankly, Amy Lou, she was getting pretty darn sick and tired of cleaning up the house, only to have us come along and mess it all up, she said. Do you want my opinion, Mr. Nelson? I think this whole thing is a dangerous threat to your home and happiness. Well, I don't see how. I read a book once where a woman became obsessed with keeping her house clean. It was awful. She worked from morning till night, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. It began affecting her. She began to change in appearance. Her neck grew longer. She wore an old black smock. Her feet grew together. And at the end of the book, she wasn't a woman any longer. She was a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> what, a, what a terrifying story. Yes. Imagine taking a vacuum cleaner to a dam. Yes, the suction would keep untying your shoes. You've got to save her, Mr. Nelson. Go in there, take a stand, mess up the house. Maybe you're right. Sure, you're not a mouse. Take the bull by the horns. Sure, you're a lion, not a lamb. You've been the goat long enough. No wonder the house is a mess. All those animals in there. <laughs> Table. Yes, I know I did. Uh, where are your coats, boys? In the hall closet. The hall closet? Throw them on the Davenport where they belong. <laughs> oh, boy. Pa's being tired of being clean, No, it's too. not that, boys. Not exactly. I'm doing it for your mother. See, it's dangerous to have a house that's too neat. It can do things to you. It can change your appearance. Ricky, don't pucker up your lips like that. You look like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Huh? Simply this. We're going to change this antiseptic tomb we've been living in back to a comfortable home. We'll start... Yes, we'll start by dropping this potted ivy right on the floor. <laughs> Gee, Pop, that'll make an awful mess. What'll Mom say? Oh, she'll probably rant and rave for a few minutes, fly off the handle. We can't help that. It's for our own good. Now, where's a good spot? Mm-hmm. Uh, here, uh, David... Take this and drop it right over there on the floor. Me? Oh, no, Pop. Why don't you do it? I have an idea. Ricky, you're closer to the floor. Maybe if you dropped it... Ricky? Ricky? Where did Ricky go, David? David? Hmm. 
Maybe it might have the same general effect if I just messed up a few pillows. After all, I... Oh, Ozzy, my potted ivy all over the floor. But baby, uh, that is, I, I mean... Uh... <laughs> Harriet, honestly, I, I don't know how it happened. I was standing here with the potted ivy in my hands, and all of a sudden something yanked my feet, and, and down I went. Well, here, I'll give you a hand. Hey, what's this? Well, no wonder I fell down. Somebody lassoed me. Yeah, for a minute I thought I was going to miss you. <laughs> you mean you deliberately lassoed me and, and made all the mess? Now, don't be angry with me, dear. But I don't understand. I thought you liked the house like Mrs. Richardson's. Well, not quite, dear. Not after talking to Mr. Richardson. In fact, I got the lasso idea from him. From Mr. Richardson? Uh Uh-huh. I went over there to return a magazine I'd borrowed, and there was Mr. Richardson, a big smile on his face, stretched out on the couch, smoking his pipe, his feet up on the radio phonograph, just having a wonderful time. For goodness sakes, where was Mrs. Richardson? Tied up on the back porch. Back in just a moment. Well, now, that's the way things ought to be. Natural, livable. And it was Harriet who said it straight, too. There are a lot of wives who could take a lesson from Harriet, all right. A lot of wives get hysterical over the tiniest bit of dust and blow their tops when some little thing is out of place. Practically make you take off your shoes when you come in the house. Uh, your wife like that? (laughs) Heck no. My wife's swell. Maybe that's why I bought her that set of 1847 Rogers Brothers last week. And you know, Mr. Smith... You're absolutely right about that 1847 silverware. It's really great, isn't it? Really beautiful workmanship. Well, where else but in 1847 Rogers Brothers could you find those gem-like open-work knife handles, for example? Or the extraordinary height and depth of the beautiful ornamentation. And then there are the striking patterns themselves. Each one, you know, adoration, eternally yours, first love and remembrance, is designed to suit an individual taste and preference. I was pretty impressed with the price of 1847 Rogers Brothers, too. Hasn't gone up a cent since 1945. Oh, that's a wonderful thing, all right. And gosh, I bet you're getting lots of attention since you gave your wife that set. As a matter of fact, Mr. Smith, she's been so busy showing it to everybody on Rogers Road that I've hardly seen her. Wish she'd settle down. The house is beginning to look all upset. Well, (laughs) you've got to expect that kind of reaction, you know. After all, 1847 Rogers Brothers is the finest silver plate in America. Oh, and by the way, there's an interesting story in color pictures of the Nelson family in the March issue of Movie Stars Parade magazine. Harriet. Harriet, are you awake? Just about. What's the matter? Something's been preying on my mind for hours. Where did you learn to use a lasso? Go to sleep. (laughs) Fine chance with this thing running through my brain. What's running through your brain? The thought of you and that lasso. You're too good with it. I keep thinking back to our wedding day. What about it? Tell me the truth. Was I roped in? (laughs) Tune in again next week to another adventure of Ozzie and Harriet, starring Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And remember, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. Yes, Harriet, America's finest silver plate is... 1847 Rogers Brothers. Appearing in support of Ozzie and Harriet were John Brown, Tommy Bernard, Henry Blair, Janet Waldo, Lorene Tuttle, and Marvin Miller. Original music was composed and conducted by Billy May. This program originates in the Hollywood studios of the National Broadcasting Company and is also broadcast over the Trans-Canada Network of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This adventure of Ozzie and Harriet will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. How much will $10 buy today? Well, for one thing, a 22 and a half pound care food package for any individual or group in 11 countries in Europe and in Japan, Korea, and Okinawa. It will feed a starving baby for the first three months of his life. 
It will buy enough all-wool material to make a full suit for an adult man. It will buy two all-wool blankets to keep the cold of winter and despair from a shivering heart. Ten dollars buys a lot. So send your check today to CARE, New York City, New York. In Canada, address CARE at 193 Spark Street, Ottawa. This is Bernie Smith speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.